Hi. In this video, we'll be learning about HTML styling. So, so far, our web pages are looking pretty good. We've got headers, formatted text, links, images, lists, tables. We've, we've got some cool stuff going on on our web pages. But you know what? We can get even more stylish. And the way we're going to do that is by introducing the style attribute. So the style attribute is an attribute that we can add to any HTML tag that lets us add several different types of styles to the tag. So how do we use this? Well, on any tag, no matter what the tag name is, all we have to do is insert into the opening tag the style attribute. And so the way this works is that the style attribute defines several different style properties about the tag. So for example, we can have a P tag whose style has the color blue or an h1 that has a font size of 60. So we see that we define the property that we're styling, colon, then the value, and then a semicolon. And what's cool is we can have multiple styles on one tag. All we have to do is separate out these property value pairs with semicolons. So as long as it's all in double quotes, we can have style equals, and then a massive string defining several different properties and several different values. So for example, here we have just a standard p tag that says hello. But if we add the style attribute and then inside the quotes give it the color blue, color colon blue, semicolon, now the text is blue. But we don't have to stop there. We can add a background color of yellow, and now we have this nice highlight. And we can add a font size of 60 pixels, and now the text is really big. So using this strategy, we can add several styles to a single tag. So what are some of the stylistic properties that we can manipulate? Well, the first is color. The color property defines the text color for the tag. So if we have a color of red, then all the text inside of that tag, even within sub tags, even within nested tags, all of that text will have the color red. We can also do blue, we can do yellow, and we have several colors we can choose from. We can also do background color, and that will set the background color for the entirety of that tag. We can do same thing, red, blue, yellow, and several other colors. Um, we can play around with the font, so we can set the font size to be any number of pixels we like. Here we have an example of 12 pixels, 30 pixels, and 60 pixels. We can set the text alignment with the text align property. So if we have a text align of left, then we have a left alignment. We can also do center, and we can do right, and that will align the text within the tag. Now you may be wondering, what colors do I have to choose from? Is it just red, blue, and yellow? turns out there's actually 140 colors that have names in HTML. So we have all your standard colors. We got red, blue, and green. We have some kind of weird colors like cyan, and then we have some really strange names like blanched almond. If you want to see a full list of the 140 colors we can play around with, you can go to w3schools.com, go to this URL, and get a full list of all the HTML color names. So let's play around with the style attribute in the editor. Okay, so we're going to look at styling our list. So if you notice now, it's just plain. Everything's black and relatively uneventful. So we're going to start by giving our H1 some style. So let's give it a color. I'm going to say color, and we're going to use this olive color. And you can look up the colors online and find a whole bunch of them. So you notice we get that nice olive color there. And let's also change the font size a little bit. So we're going to say font size, and we'll go up to 50 pixels. Okay. And again, I'm putting a semicolon after each of these. If I don't put the semicolon at the end, it's okay. It'll still work, um, but it's good to put that there so that if I add something else later, I don't have to go back and think of adding that semicolon. All right, so now let's style our unordered list. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do here. I'm going to use this attribute called list style type. And so right now, if you'll notice that we have circles there, I can actually change those to squares by doing that. So again, I can run that, see how they change. Um, and we're going to change our font size as well because we made the other one bigger. So we want to make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to say font size and we'll go to 20 pixels. Uh, and I forgot our quotes right here. So let's get those in there. And then finally, let's change our color to a navy color. Let's see how that works. Okay, now notice how this was on the unordered list, but the ordered list is still underneath here, and so that also gets that same set of attributes. But maybe we don't necessarily want it to be the same, so let's go and change that as well. We're going to start with our list type. Okay, and so again, 
Now, in order to this to have different types of list types, so I can actually use what we call lower alpha. And so right now you see it's numbers, but I can actually change this to letters. And I can go and add something like a color or a font size here to make them a little bit smaller. So we're going to say font size. And we'll make that 18 pixels. And refresh that there. And now if I want, maybe I want each of my cookies to be a different color. So I'm going to use a style with a color. So I'm just going to copy this part here. And so for each of these, I'm going to put a style color. I'm getting a little bit of funny looks here because my quotes aren't lining up. Okay, so let's try our chocolate chips. We have a chocolate color. For our oatmeal, we're going to do this dark golden rod color. And then for our peanut butter, let's just try a nice brown. Okay, and then we get our three colors. So go ahead and play around with this um, example, and good luck with the exercises.